everyone. Welcome to Cover to Cocktail. Today we're going to be talking about our August book, Confessions of a 40-something. Fuck up. <laughs> Sorry, mine is a little bit weird to see, but there we go. Um, I have the non-PG version. Susan has the PG version. Yep. The, the book's the same, just the title's a little different. <laughs> title. Um, yeah, and this book I got from my book club. So we haven't been meeting because of COVID. Um, but once in a while, someone will send out an email and say, oh, I have these books. Does anyone want them? And I saw this one and I'm like, well, it might be good. Um, and my husband actually read it first and he said it was really good. And then I thought, well, we're turning 40. Let's celebrate being 40 yeah. and read this book. <laughs> that was such a great... Um... A great thought. And, you know, I think we've had, uh, out of all of our books so far, this one has had the best response when we announced it on our Facebook page. People have really been receptive. Like, I really want to read this one because um, I think maybe a lot of people might be able to relate. So, I yeah, yeah. I mean, the unfortunate part is um, it's not as easy to find this one. So it's not in all the libraries. Um, so any friends that want to borrow this, let me know. It's in my house. <laughs> you can come get it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like I couldn't find it in any of my libraries. So I just bought mine on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to buy it, you'll see our review at the end. But it's pretty good. Yeah. So, it's, it's worth the um, buy. Or the borrow from Susan. Or the borrow. Yeah. Let me know. Um, so before we get started, let's taste our drink. Yeah. So um, this is, we're calling it a fucked up gin and tonic um, in honor of the name of the book. <laughs> and uh, the character and the main character now, she uh, drinks a lot of gin and tonics. She discovers these canned gin and tonics. So we just did a slight version of that with a little bit of cucumber and uh, lime. So let's see how it is. Oh, it's, it's okay. Nice. Yeah. It's uh my pretty strong. Yeah, my cucumber is kind of strong. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mine is just like a nice hint of, but I also like cucumber and you don't, so that's probably like all you're tasting. <laughs> Maybe those tiny cucumbers have extra cucumber flavor. I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe. <laughs> they might. <laughs> Great things come in small packages. That's what my mom always used to tell me. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> you know, I was always the smallest one in our class. She's like, it's okay. <laughs> I was pretty close to you, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. So let's get into confessions. Um, all right, so the book starts out, so this one I have a prologue with a prologue where she's talking about um, her podcast and how she's made this podcast of the same title um, to talk about her life and how there must be other people out there who feel the same, same way as her. Um, and then we start off in January with her, her being now. Um, has, she's just moved back to London after I think seven or eight years in the States. Yeah. Where she had a business with her fiance and everything has fallen apart. She now has an ex fiance. She has no money left and she's moved home. Um, and <laughs> Her parents offered to let her stay at their house, but she just, as a 40-something, just couldn't do it. So she ends up renting a room from a landlord named Edward, who, like, I don't know how she could possibly live with this guy when he keeps the house at 12 degrees. Like, <laughs> I love that that's your breaking point. 12 degrees. <laughs> Sorry, I'm out. To be fair, I'm and the I, same, because I like yeah. everything warm. <laughs> Like, you could kind of see now, like, 12 degrees. No. 
this is not happening. But then Arthur, the dog shows up and she's like, yeah, I'll take him. So, yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, so she couldn't live with her parents. Could you move in with your parents at 40 if you had to? I would don't you? know if I could do it. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I feel like I'd have to be in a pretty tight spot. It wouldn't be the first time that I, like, you know, moved home for, like, a summer or something when I had to. But, you know, that was 20 years ago and I was in my early 20s. That was like university days when. Yeah, like come back for summer. I don't know if I could. I think I would if I had to. Um, especially if, if like money was really tight or something. But it definitely wouldn't be my first choice. No. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be mine either. So I don't blame her for not. Yeah. Choosing to live with Edward instead of her parents. And we later learned that her parents rent out, rent out her bedroom as a Airbnb. So <laughs> I love that because she was so offended by that, <laughs> which I guess it's like, you know, because her brother still gets his room and everything, but he's there. He's been living there and goes and visits. But, you know, it's yeah. still, you think it's, is it like the loss of your childhood bedroom? And it's almost this sense that your parents have just almost abandoned you. Like, you don't have a room here anymore. And I think there was a point where they were like, you can, uh, oh, not that you can rent it, but she almost had to book it, right? Because yeah. she had to yeah. let them know when she'd be coming to visit so they wouldn't book it out. And it almost feels like you have to book to stay with your family. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, but luckily for her, Edward's not there all the time because he, he works in the city and his family lives outside the city so he goes there on the weekends and is only in town really for three or four days a week so so she gets to crank the heat up while he's gone and... <laughs> she's definitely like breaks like every rule that um edward throws at her which is pretty funny like they seem so a, a very opposite in a lot of ways throughout the book um he gets mad at her for just like the funniest things. I don't know if it's mad, maybe just annoyed, like that she's not sorting her recycling properly, <laughs> you know, all these things. So that's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Did you think that Edward was going to be a love interest near the beginning? Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Because it's the unexpectedness of it, right? I, but yeah. it. It did throw me a little bit because he was married, right? I mean, that's he's going to visit his wife, his kids, they're going on vacations. And you're like, oh, I could really see you being a love interest. But, like, how is that going to go? Like, where is yeah. the flow of the book to get there with that? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get there later. Um, so Nell comes back. Uh, her birthday's in January, and she's really excited because she gets to see all of her friends, right? But all of her friends are married with kids, and on the day of her birthday, every single friend cancels. Because something's come up with their kids or, you know, wife or whatever. So, Can I now, say that this has happened to me, and I understand her pain? Yeah, it was like back in my 20s and I was still in university, but you know, I took longer in university than everybody else. And so you weren't yeah. there anymore. You weren't in Saskatoon and it was just me. And some of my friends, uh, like, you know, like Ty and Ryan and them, they were, they were out of town, but they were supposed to come back for my birthday. So it was like, this is going to be an epic birthday. And then they just didn't show up because they had had too much to drink and stayed where they were. And I was like, so I kind of yeah. sat there by myself on my birthday waiting for them to show up. It was super lame. Oh. I feel Come her on, pain. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So the book, um, every night she has this diary where she writes down things that she's grateful for and some of those are hilarious yeah and this um, it's kind of made me compare it a bit to Bridget Jones like it's not it's not her writing a diary but it felt like 
very similar to the Bridget Jones novels. I was going to say this book absolutely reminded me of Bridget Jones, except I did not like how Bridget Jones was written. I hated that style of writing. Hated it. Oh, I loved, I loved, loved Bridget Jones. <laughs> really? I mean, I love the story. And actually, the movies are like my some of my favorite movies. And I love the stories. But I had trouble reading her writing style. This was a lot smoother for me. I really enjoyed this a lot more. But there was yeah. a lot about this. Like, the two love interests. Like, Edward mm -hmm. would be... What's the, okay, what are the two love interests in Bridget Jones? And go. Oh, Mark Darcy. Yep. And who's the other guy? I can see him as Hugh Grant. Okay, we'll just say the Hugh Grant character. So <laughs> Edward is Mark Darcy, and yeah, Johnny totally. is the Hugh Grant character in this book. Totally. Right? Totally. And then, like, the whole feel of her feeling like, her life is all messed up and isn't where she wants it to be. And she's older and like the whole story has that Bridget Jones vibe, which is great because I love it. I just I enjoyed it. reading this a lot more. Yeah. And yeah. And then I felt like it collided with, oh, we'll get to there. Go ahead. Keep going. We'll get to the I other. Was, this one is someone in their forties while Bridget Jones is someone in their twenties. Like thinking nothing, nothing's ever going to happen for her, like late 20s. So kind of, I mean, and Bridget is, she's a fuck up too. So. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I realized the time period of like the age that Bridget was supposed to be. I think I thought she was supposed to be older. I think she was in her 20s because by the third book... She's in her 40s with kids. Right. Yeah, I think she was younger. And you know how we were in our 20s. Like, oh my God, am I ever going to meet anybody when you're like 23? And like, <laughs> you probably will. Don't panic. You're 23. <laughs> <laughs> did you feel that way? I don't know if I felt that way. I did because I didn't really date very much. Like, I didn't really oh. have many boys. So, yeah, I left university and didn't, hadn't really met anybody. And then but you I, like, were, like, worried? You were, like, worried that you weren't, you felt like you weren't going to? No, not really worried, but just, like, huh, I've never really, you know, I haven't really dated very much. And because I'm a really quiet person, like, how am I going to meet anybody? So, but I did. Yeah at a bar <laughs> which is so unlike you <laughs> yeah. but fantastic <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, worked out but um yeah I don't know anyways back to the book um now I kind of I finished this last week and I can't remember exactly how everything goes but um, so Nell's broke. She doesn't have a job. Her friends are like nowhere to be found. And um, she's just really lonely and really feels like her life is messed up. And what did she do wrong? Or like, why isn't, why aren't things working out for her? Like, like she thinks they're supposed to. Yeah. And I think she falls into this scenario that I think a lot of people fall into where there are these societal expectations of where you should be in life at certain periods of time in your life. Like by a certain time, you should have someone, you should have a house, you should have kids, you should have this. And she's seeing that all her friends have that and she's not there yet. And she's feeling like she's running out of time. And yeah. it's, and it's interesting. Cause I'm like, I wonder if it's, you know, what she really wants or is it, if it's just like you know this is what society tells her where she should be in life well maybe it's a combination of both maybe she really does want to you know be in a relationship at that point and have kids but um yeah she just didn't feel like she's there and you're right she just doesn't know why yeah yeah and i, I mean i get it i i followed a very traditional path so like i have the husband and kids and house and job and um, but let me tell you, there's many days I wonder what the hell am I doing? 
<laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna leave this till the end of the end of our little review, but we can chat now. Like, have you like felt in your life like how you have you really felt like her situation where you're like, oh my god, my I well, maybe not exactly like her because things have worked out very similarly to how I had hoped they would. Um, but man, there's lots of days where I'm like, what am I doing? Like, and then, um, you know, like, am I in the right job? Um, should I even, like, what am I doing here? So what is going on with my life? And is this where I actually want my life to be? So, and I think everybody gets to that point. Yeah. And I wonder, because the title of the book is Confessions of a 40-something Fuck-Up, and I'm kind of like, did she really feel like sh she had fucked up, or did she just feel like my life is fucked up? <laughs> and, you know, there's all these circumstances that, you know, some of them out of your control that just put you in that position, and it's not your fault. Because for me, I think that's a lot of, like, my situation is I don't know if I've ever, you know, felt like, oh my gosh, my life is fucked up because I'm a fuck up. Like, I don't know if I've ever felt that way as much as I've just had, like, all of these crazy things happen. And <laughs> it's just crazy life scenarios that are just, ah! That's probably, yeah, that's probably more what it is. Like, yeah. I, I think I have it pretty together, but then all of a sudden something will happen. I'll be like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. and you know, I've had like a, a lot of change in the last six, six years <laughs> from like married, divorced, moving to a new country, married, starting new jobs, moving. I, we've moved four times in the last five years. Not to different cities, but we've moved to, you know, I moved from Canada to Iowa to Michigan, and then within that moved to different places within those cities. So it's been a lot of change, and I'm just like, oh my God, what is my life doing? Um, but I've never <laughs> felt that it's because I screwed up. It's just like dealing with immigration is dealing with immigration. That's just something I have to deal with, and it feels like it's all messed up at the time, but that's out of my control, right? Yeah. I mean, in her case, like, she had a successful career. She met Ethan, her American ex-fiance, and then gave up her successful career to open this business that she loved, but ultimately failed, which then caused the failure. Probably didn't cause the failure of her engagement, but because um, I, I think the engagement was on the rocks before that, but ultimately yeah. she ended up splitting up with him. So I don't know, you might look back on that and say, well, why did I quit my job and follow him? Like, you might wonder, second guess your decisions. But, yeah. you know, it brought him back to England, which, um, right. and to her friends and family. So. Yeah. So you never know, like, a lot of people are scared of change and Sometimes it just, at least for me, I felt like it's always led to better, like a better road, you know? Once you get over all the hard part, you're like, yay, we're here and this is actually great. Like, for me, I still question because I not only move, like when we moved from Des Moines to here, um, I changed, like completely changed career paths <laughs> from having a very good, well-paying job with the government in Des Moines but, you know, it was really stressful and I didn't know if I really wanted that. And moving to a job now that I really love, but it pays significantly less. And you're like, are you making the right choice, making that change at 40? <laughs> like, you're basically starting at the bottom of the totem pole again. You know, I spent how many years working my way up to that position um, or that level of position. And now I'm like, yay. And Corey and I were just talking about this this morning. We were having this discussion because we were talking about the book. And I'm like, I don't regret it. Because, I mean, yeah, we, we don't make as much. But we both really love our jobs. And neither one of our jobs is high stress. We really like them. Um, it's a good work-life balance. But 
Yeah. Yeah. You kind of wonder, right? Where you're just like, yeah. So that's the question for me where I'm like in five years, will I feel the same way about that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Cause I see that cause I can at times have a very high stress job. Um, so yeah, lots of times I think like, why am I doing this to myself? So anyways, back to the book. So, um, Nell ends up getting a job writing obituaries. So after reaching out to all these people looking for a job, finally someone replies back to her and says, hey, you can write obituaries for me. And this is where I think she kind of starts to get a new perspective because she meets Cricket. Yeah. Um, I think her actual name is Catherine. I might be wrong, but um, Cricket has just lost her husband, Monty. Um, she's in her 80s, and when Nell goes to her door, she com- like she expects to find a little old lady, um, and she finds this amazing, fabulous 80-year-old cricket who becomes one of her best friends. So, which I think was, I mean, what a great thing because cricket gives yeah. her some some wisdom and uh, kind of helps her push her in the direction of find your tribe. Right. She tells her, you know, go find your people because maybe your current group of friends aren't your people anymore. Maybe they still are. Yeah. And you know what you love. And Cricket, I love Cricket's character, by the way. Um, And Cricket has just lost her husband. And as much as I think Cricket has helped Nell, I feel like Nell is helping Cricket through this time period Mm -hmm. when they become such good friends. Um, Yeah. But they're just they're really helping each other and it just goes to show that like yeah. friends come in all shapes and forms and so you just kind of have to be open to whoever wanders into your life at any point in time because you never know where that's gonna lead yeah you might find your best people in the most unlikely of places so and that's a great example of it that's why i love i love the whole relationship with that yeah that one that was great and like they she goes all kinds of places with cricket they go to spain she yeah. takes cricket to her family's christmas dinner she takes her to a wedding okay and i love it because nell's mom thinks that she's bringing a guy to like christmas into the wedding and then she shows up with cricket and her mom's like uh not what i expected yeah. <laughs> because her mom is totally that person who is actually I think this is probably a lot of moms where you're like okay I want you to be happy but I also want like grandbabies and I want a wedding to plan and like all of those things yeah she's a typical mom did you ever feel that from your your family like no 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 um my mom got a lot of pressure from her mom to have kids so um i have a sister who's seven years older so after having her then she kept hearing well when are you going to have another one when are you going to have another one so she actually didn't tell them that she was pregnant until like six or seven months and then, <laughs> then finally had to um, yeah. and it was because because she felt all this pressure to have kids so she's never done that never asked us when we'd have kids or get married or anything like that that's amazing. Good for your mom, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, just you guys will do it on your own time, right? Yeah, and if you don't want to have kids, so be it, right? Like, my right. little sister doesn't have any kids, and that's that's totally fine. That's how that's how their life is. So great. And yeah. I think that's. I feel like this book is like shout out to all of because I actually I don't know if it's just my career paths or like who we hang out with but I have a ton of friends who have no kids you know and are my age um or older or younger but like kind of in the middle range who don't have kids don't want kids may not be in relationships don't want to be in relationships um and they're kind of buck in society so I'm like yes people do you know do you i actually have a lot of friends with no kids too um the friends i have with kids i've met through my kids 
Oh, yeah. I have these kids I met friends, but um, some of my close friends have never had kids. Yeah. So, which in a way, um, like I don't wish that they had because this is their life and this is what they've chosen, but it might have been fun to have kids right. together. Right. And they can all. They can all play together and hang out together and but they they now have some fun aunts right that, that don't don't have kids right so i sometimes feel um bad for my brother's kids because like i'm an only sibling and yeah. he's they're not going to have any cousins on my side and I'm not sure about um, Chelsea's side or not, but she only has one brother as well. So I don't know if his intention is to ever have kids either. And so right now it's just the two of them. And, you know, they're older, not older, but they're like, you know, at this point, um, yeah, like, like eight in five or something. And they, they don't have any cousins. And at, at least on my end, none in the foreseeable future. <laughs> so... My kids only have four cousins, two on each side, and they're both in Saskatchewan, so they never really get yeah. to see them. Where I come from a family with a lot of cousins. Me too. You came from a family with only, I think, five cousins. Oh. But I had, I had a ton of cousins. Yeah. Have. Have. Yeah. Ton of cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not put them all in the past tense. <laughs> We're all still there. <laughs> <laughs> had so yeah it, it's kind of sad in a way that the kids don't have cousins and don't have anyone close but it's a different different world and they're I mean they're happy yeah yep, so they exactly don't, they don't know what they're missing so they're right fine. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um all right so back to the book um good conversations but back to the book um yeah, what else happened? So in the, early in the book, she also um, meets Hot Dad, who later she discovers is Hot Uncle. Um, and maybe before we go further into Hot Uncle, let's talk a little bit about Fiona, her best friend, and Annabelle. So uh, this yeah. relationship, I mean, I think when we did the description for this book, we said that the book was, I, I described it, and maybe you disagree, but I described it as sort of a mashup between Bridget Jones meets um, Bridesmaids. And so I don't, yeah. have you seen the movie Bridesmaids? Yeah. And you know, I, like there's, there, there's the two best friends and then the one best friend ends up with like a rich, fancy best friend who tries to control everything. And yeah. that was Fiona's new friend, Annabelle, in this book to me. Yes, yeah, totally. And yeah. it was so annoying. Yeah. Because, who, like, uh, I mean, Fiona's best friend comes back to town and Annabelle maybe feels threatened, but holy, was she ever, like, out of line. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, but it made for some funny scenarios. Like, I love when um, they're at the track, like, there, there's, like, a mom Killed. daughter like <laughs> runoff or something like that where like all of the students the moms like do a, a I, I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a fun like sprint but yeah. obviously Annabelle and Nell like are seeing each other off the line and then they're like we're going for it and they're the lead and then <laughs> Annabelle like trips Nell and sends her flying at a it makes yeah. for some comedic moments like the whole scenarios yeah yeah totally and that's i think where nell realized that hot dad was actually hot uncle whose name is johnny johnny we'll get yeah yeah oh she had gone on a date with him by then i think she had yeah because she showed up at the um track or the yeah. whatever that day was the student day with the parents and yeah. stuff and you know, all of these other moms are fawning over Johnny and she walks up and is like, hey, like he's mine. I've been dating him. Um, yeah. Not realizing that he's dating everybody <laughs> or has been dating. I mean, he hasn't like, you know, not at the same oh. time, um, but he has basically dated like everyone. 
<laughs> He's just yeah. a player. Totally. <laughs> Literally, which she finds out later, and he ghosts her. Like, come on, millennials! Like, that's what players do, Susan. What? Come on, there's no reason to ghost people. I guess I'm old fashioned, but the least you can do is tell someone you don't want to date them anymore. So, yeah, but here's the thing: is he probably wasn't seeing it as dating, right? He's like, oh, I went on a couple dates with this girl. <laughs> We had sex. I got what I wanted. We're good. Like he probably never saw it as dating. It's the And then he calls her back and then he tries to call her later and just hook up again. And she's Because that's what he wanted. That's his that's who he is, right? And that's why he reminds me of the Hugh Grant character from Bridget Jones. Totally. I still can't remember his name. I can't either. <laughs> if anybody remembers it, put it in our Facebook feed. <laughs> I mean, the books are right above me, but I'm, I won't stand up for them. <laughs> don't worry about that now. <laughs> yeah, and what else does Annabelle do? She throws a party for Michelle's husband, who was, his name is, hold on, I wrote it down, Max. This was horrible. That was horrible. So um, Max and Michelle were going to go out for his birthday on a dinner alone. And ask Nell to babysit, and she's, of course, I'll babysit. I haven't seen the kids forever. And then she finds out later that it was a party and everyone was invited but her. Oh and my Annabelle god. Claims that she didn't have Nell's email address. Bull. Yeah. And I, I mean, what are like why didn't her other friends say anything? I was I was mad at the right? whole group. I know. I was mad at the whole group until until later when you find out that like so as it goes on you find out that um most of them other than fiona a lot of the others in the group um are not entirely fond of annabelle um and so like she had basically taken some of these things like there's a baby shower for michelle and you know, the birthday party and stuff like that. And she's basically like taking these over without even asking. And uh, these people didn't, you know, they didn't want or ask for this. Um, so, yeah. And in, and in the case of the birthday, they all thought that Nell was just being nice. They had no idea that she didn't know. They thought that she was just like, oh, Nell's being like awesome and babysitting so that, you know, they can go out and have a good time. They they didn't realize that she didn't even know about it until after the fact. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was terrible. And then um, Annabelle's daughter, um, I can't remember her name. Clemen but she, Clem? Clementine, I think. Clementine, so same age as Fiona's daughter, Izzy. Um, so they're, they're doing play dates, right? Like it's always nice when you have a mom friend and the kids like each other. Because then you can hang out with the mom and chat and have fun while the kids have fun. Um, but Nell later discovers that Izzy's being bullied by Clementine. Yeah. And that, I mean, that caused a big problem with Fiona and Annabelle. As I mean, it likely would in a situation like that. But this is the point where you find out in the book, like, what's maybe going on with Annabelle and why she's being such a crazy person is... You know, she's going through all her own stuff with her husband, and it's a really bad situation. And Clementine is not this horrible little kid, unlike the little kid in our last book that we read, who was horrible little kid. Um, <laughs> she is just, like, seeing everything that's happening at home, and it's stressing her out, and she's just acting out about it. Um, but then that's where... So this was great. Um where they're sitting around, that this was just a great scene where all of the women are sitting around the table at somebody's, like the Halloween party, I think it is. And uh, and they're listening. They start, to, I can't remember which one of the women is like, hey, have you heard about this podcast? And it's actually Nell's podcast. That's and so they start playing snippets of it and it takes a while until they figure out that, oh my God, this is Nell. But before they figure out it's Nell, all of the women are just expressing so much how they can relate to it. And you're hearing all of their different stories. And 
here's Nell thinking that all of their lives are just perfect. And it's that realization that none of them feel like their lives are perfect and they can all relate to this no matter what the situation is. And yeah. Yeah. That and you kind of feel bad for Annabelle because she seems to have like the most messed up life. Yeah. Like all of a sudden getting a divorce and she feels like she has to be perfect on Instagram and have like the best house and the best parties and all of this and stuff. And... And yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, and now like she's a way better person than I am because she forgives everyone like instantly. I know me too. <laughs> trying, trying to make, like, you know, trying to make everybody feel comfortable and happy and like forgives everybody. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> I have to say like the line might've been drawn at the birthday party where I wasn't invited and I sat there babysitting the kids. Like that might have been my line in the sand where I'm like, I don't know about you people and this. Like, I might be finding new people because this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. how does this even happen? But she yeah. she is. She is a good person. <laughs> yeah, she's a way better person than me. Um, yeah. What else happened? So. And then I guess other, Nell's dad gets sick. And that's kind yeah. of a turning point in the book. Yeah, Nell's dad has a heart attack. Yeah. Right? Um, or no, it's a car accident. Yeah. In a car accident. And then he did have a heart attack while the helicopter was flying him to the hospital. And they didn't think he was going to make it. So Nell gets that dreaded call in the middle of the night from her mom. Yeah. That I think as we get older, that's probably something we all worry about a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um I worry about that now. Do you worry yeah, about she that with your parents her... yet? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, I worry about dad being alone on the farm one day and something happening and nobody being there. Yeah. 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 Every time I go back, right? Because they're getting older. Every time I go back, you realize they're getting older and yeah. Yeah, it makes me work a little bit. Yeah. And I, I have much of the responsibility on my older sister because she's closer. So. Right. Yeah. And that's but. for me, too, because Jordan's there. So he he's m more in tune with that or having to look after that stuff. And my mom, especially because of her MS. Yeah. Like most recently, she's having trouble like swallowing stuff. Oh. And she's actually written down that like if she chokes on something and they can't get it out. She doesn't want to be intubated. It's like, just make me comfortable and I'm good to go. And as much as, and she doesn't want to eat soft food, right? Um, Cause the doctors are like, this wouldn't be an issue if you just ate like blended up food. And she's like, no way. Yeah, good for her. I know, that's what I said. And so Jordan and I have talked about it and I'm like, you know, MS has taken so much from her that like, if the yeah. one thing that gives her pleasure is eating chicken fingers and her decision is to like go on a chicken finger, then that be hers. <laughs> right? Like that's that's her well, choice as much as it sucks for all of us, but like if that's why yeah. she wants to do it, let her be. But well, yeah. yeah. Well, we've been went through a lot, so yes. Why not? <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, so Nell's dad ends up in the hospital and Edward is like the the savior. Oh yeah, he drives all the way out there because she hops on the train. She doesn't have a car. Hops on the train and goes out to her parents. And it sounds like a, like a three hour train ride. Mm -hmm. um, so gets there and sits with her mom and feels like she needs to be strong for everybody. At one point, she breaks down and calls Ethan because he's like the only person she feels like she can phone. And she knows Ethan's not going to be there for her and not going to call her back, even though he says he will. And the next thing you know, Edward shows up at the hospital. And randomly. Like, well, not, I guess not randomly. He knew what was going on, but yeah. Yeah, and like, he's this rock for her and her mom. And all of a sudden, now I was like, wow, like, Edward. <laughs> Maybe this is my guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, she still thinks he's married with the kids. Um, oh, yeah. 
a little bit later on that we find out things aren't working out with his wife. And but he's actually kids. going through a divorce. Yeah, he's getting yeah. divorced, and now his kids are older. And Nell asks, well, what, like, what are you doing? What about the kids? And he talks about selling assets for the divorce. It sounds like he's quite well off. So selling some assets for the divorce. And she just assumes that includes the apartment. So right. she thinks, well, I'm going to find a place to live. And um, luckily, luckily for her, she kind of stumbles across um, a program where she would be eligible to buy a house, which or a, yeah. a flat. Not not a house, but an apartment in North American speak apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when poor Edward finds out, he he's just kind of crushed. Like, what do you mean you're leaving? Yeah. And, you know, explains. Because as much Edward, as they've oh, as much as they've had like these like moments of like push and pull kind of tug of like things like the stupid thermostat. At this point, because yeah. this is near the end, they've also had some, like, kind of endearing moments where, you know, they make pancakes together. Apparently, does Britain have, is it like a pancake day? Pancake day. Um, we, have, we do have it here. Um, my boss, every um, Shrove Thursday, makes pancakes for the office. Sorry, every Thursday? No, no, every, um, it's right before Easter. So it, on Shrove Thursday. Oh, okay. Um, that's pancake day. And she makes pancakes for the office. Who knew? Yeah. I had no idea this is a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. Um, well, it's more of a Christian religious thing, so. Yeah, but how are pancakes, like, pancakes are Christian religion thing? Sorry, this is my ign ignorance. I don't no, understand the pancake relation to it. No, I'm... I'm not really great on all of this, but I believe it's just you're not supposed to eat meat. So you oh. eat pancakes. Though we so, eat it with bacon, so. Whoops. So you're not supposed to eat meat, and so somehow the world has decided that the pancake is the thing of choice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. I guess one <laughs> but yeah, I mean, our church has it, so you can go on pancakes on that Thursday. So That's amazing. Things yeah. I didn't know. You're enlightening me. This is, I had no idea. I had no idea that this was what was the deal was with the pancakes. I thought it was a British pancake thing. I didn't realize it was. No, <laughs> it's not. Though maybe they take it more seriously, seriously than we do. I don't know. Apparently. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But. So they have these the moments. I guess that's the thing. Like, like yeah. despite the, the, like, the thermostat crazy type of other and like the recycling and whatnot they they've started yeah. to have these moments yeah they they had one where they went to the pub together because she was yeah. um kind of breaking down about johnny and he listened to everything that was going on and i think they went on a long walk with arthur at one point mm -hmm. so yeah they had some really nice moments um yeah and then yeah he's really sad that she's gonna move out at some point but eventually, eventually they find their way to each other, which is. Yeah. And it's the Halloween night when it was like exactly. a great night for her because, you know, there was the moment with the ladies where they're all expressing how they can relate to her podcast and then realize it's her. And then they are, she came there with Edward and I don't think it, like, it wasn't like a date per se, but yeah, there was. Yeah everybody was like, who's the handsome guy you brought, you know? And then I think that was when they had their first kiss because on the way home, they're walking home and he kisses her and their relationship yeah. kind of goes from there, so. Yeah, and I remember something, um, something about the horrible appetizer he brought. And oh, no yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but it, it didn't sound good either. I don't know either, but I remember, it. was it like a deviled egg something? I thought it had peanut butter in it, but oh, maybe. I can't remember it now. I remember I it sounded disgusting too, so. Yeah, I don't know if I can find it, but yeah, it sounded terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, this was later than, ha than Halloween. I think this was December. Oh, was it a Christmas party? 
Christmas. Yeah, it was a Christmas ah. party. Right. Yeah, because she invited Edward to go with him. Or gotcha. go with her. Yeah, but I can't remember the horrible thing he brought. Anyways, that's fine. <laughs> But it was good. And I liked, so the way that the author laid out the story was that it went um, in months, right? And it kind of outlined the course of a year. And, you know, she kind of had an idea of where it was supposed to go over the year or, you know, what she wanted to accomplish. And I think her life didn't necessarily go the way she wanted, but I think it went in an unexpected direction that she really liked and appreciated. So it did. yeah, and the the I mean, let's be honest, the original list she wrote out was a little um overly ambitious, maybe, or a little out there. Like what was the original a, list? Do you have it? I do. So number one was my I'm grateful for my loving husband. Um who tells me every day how much he loves me with fresh flowers and mind-blowing sex. <laughs> and then number two, snuggles with our own little miracle. So she, you know, get a husband, yeah. have a baby. Within then, the first year. Yeah, and number three, a successful high-flying career with a six-figure salary. And then a Pinterest-worthy home. And then this feeling of strength and calm that comes from doing yoga in my new Lululemon outfits. And it's very clear that she is not good at yoga and shouldn't be doing yoga. Right. It's mentioned many times in this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but in the end, she, she revises her gratitude list for all the wonderful things she's experienced over the year. Yeah. And I mean, I think she had a great year. Yeah, right? I mean, that's the thing. I, life doesn't always take you where you expect it to, but, you know, it doesn't mean it has to be bad just because it's not going where you think it should go. It can actually be better when you yeah. do all this unexpected, amazing stuff and then have, you know, wonderful adventures and things. So, so I found their first kiss. It was actually on New Year's Day and he had brought stuffed olives to the party, but they were stuffed with peanut butter. Now, I'm a peanut butter fan, but not at olives. <laughs> Me too! I like peanut butter, but not olives, and that combination sounds absolutely horrid. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. And then, yeah. um, at the very end of the book, she writes her obituary of a 40-something fuck-up, and I really liked it, because it was kind of telling yourself you're not really a fuck up you're just a 40 something who's followed a different path so and that's what I love and that's what I I hope that a lot of people who read this book because I do know people currently who you know have taken a different path and sometimes struggle because they're in social situations where people are like you're not in a relationship or you you know you don't have this or that and it's like that's why I'm like you know don't listen to other people, right? Like, if this is you and you're happy with it, just do your own thing, right? And, yeah. So, I really, I really liked the book because of that. And, you know, as long as people are enjoying their lives and having good experiences, it's all yeah. matters. <laughs> and, you know, like, it's a really thick book, so you, you'll pick it up and be like, oh, my God, 500 pages? I read it in like two days. It yep. was so good. This was one of the fastest reads that I had. You're right. It looks really thick and it looks really maybe daunting. Um, and it's maybe the thickest book that we've actually read in our book club. But I read this one faster than any of the other, other, other books that we've done so far. So it's a really quick, easy, wonderful, humorous read. It's It was really good. Yeah. It's a really good summer book. Like Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not too heavy. No. I mean, heavy because it's big. <laughs> but it's not like, you know, we've read a couple a couple of books that have been really, um, like, emotionally heavy. Uh, like, was it When All Is Said? I think that was our first one that we did. And that one was very emotionally heavy, um, but a yeah. really great read. This one is yeah. not. Like, it's... Um, yeah. But I love it because it looks at so many great 
important topics, but does it in a really lighthearted way that kind of makes you laugh and maybe doesn't make you feel quite as alone or, you know, you look at your problems and you're like, you know, everybody's going through stuff and it does it in a very humorous fashion. So, yeah. It was a good book. I definitely recommend this one. It's really good. So I have to ask because I don't know this question and I kind of wondered and then I, I meant to look it up and I didn't. Is there actually a podcast that's named this where somebody is talking about this? Is this based off of a real scenario that then got turned into a novel, like a fiction novel after? Or is this just a know. book, just a novel? I don't actually know. Um, I do know that there, Alexander Potter, um, now we follow her on Facebook or on Instagram because um, that's what we do now. We follow the authors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but she tags awesome. like she tags everything confessions of a 40 something fuck up so I'm not sure if there's a podcast I hope there is because if there is I would listen to that I but might I have sure. to look that up yeah if there isn't I guess someone should start one right <laughs> yeah maybe that should be our next endeavor Susan we can yeah. just talk about everything <laughs> have on all of our, our guests friends and just be like hey everybody tell your stories just have everybody <laughs> tell your stories all the ridiculous things that go on in our lives <laughs> oh my god and there are so many i know Crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh and you know so has you said i think you mentioned this earlier has your life like when you were young did you have like a thought and i say young but i'm like maybe like early 20s university did you have like a a way where you're like this is step by step this is how I expect my life to go and kind of milestones I want to meet because some people really do have that some people do um not really I mean career-wise yes because I you know finished university and then after university I'm gonna get my designation and it takes three years to do it so three more years of that and then but I didn't really know I like I wanted to get married I wanted to have kids but I didn't have a plan like I must meet someone uh, by this age by this age and some people do have that right and they have those expectations of when they should yeah, yeah. no I only for my career and even that I only planned it as far as getting my designation and then that was, that was the end of the plan. So. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely didn't have a plan and I still don't. <laughs> and I think it makes it easier because I don't, I set my standards low and I never disappoint myself. <laughs> <laughs> right? like, my, my goal when I finished university, Susan, was to get a job in my field. And it, that was it. To... That was it. Yeah. And you know, for some people nowadays, that's that's a huge goal. Like sometimes it's really hard to do that. And I have to say, I've been really lucky in that. Corey always is like, man, you have been the luckiest person with jobs and stuff because they just yeah. seem to like find me and things work out. But like, I never have like a goal of like where I want to work or what I want to do or, you know, it's always just like, yeah, yeah we'll see what happens and <laughs> it'll work yeah. out. I mean, that's kind of what happened to me. like after the designation because at that time you had to work in an accounting firm to get your CA now CPA now but that was so that was where I went and then after that I had no plan and I just happened to do a contract at a real estate company and now I've fallen into the real estate world and I've been here for like 10 years so that's my career now is working in real estate right so, so like, you happened. don't know. I think yeah, that's and, the best thing, right? Or you, you don't necessarily know. Things just happen. Yeah. And I mean, being in this city, I could have even easily ended up in oil and gas. But yeah, thankfully, I didn't. We don't need two people in oil and gas. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, and I've been lucky in falling into jobs where they, like, they very much value work-life balance. I know there's a lot of other um, companies that don't. So I've been really yeah. lucky to fall into 
places like that where I don't have to work a lot. Like you work hard while you're there, but when you're done, you're done. So yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate, I appreciate that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I never had like goals and, you know, I, I never wanted kids. Like I had, I worked at a daycare when I was 17. I don't know if I already mentioned this in our last podcast, but that like turned me off to children, I think forever. Um, that was sort of like a killing factor for me. And, um, but you know, you always wondered if like, oh, maybe one day my biological clock will kick in. Right. And I am now 40 and it never has. You made and, a decision. <laughs> and anytime it kind of does, we'll go out for like supper or something and there'll be a kid crying in the restaurant and that'll just kill it again. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> biological clock is like zero. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all just kind of worked out but you know like I'm on my second marriage who would have you know you never ex plan that or expect that and, you know yeah. things just happen and you know it's just life goes where it goes and people should never feel bad about how their life goes or feel like they're alone I think and that's what this is I think this is great because it's like yeah. you know it makes people feel like, you know, everybody, no matter what your situation, feel like in this book, everybody was envying everybody else's situation. Yeah, totally. Right? Like, sh Nell wanted kids and wanted a family, and like the other people, they were struggling with their kids and their family, because, you know, Fiona, what she wanted was a career, and it's not that she didn't love her kids and want her kids, but she was like, I'm tired of being at home and I want a career, right? And yeah. so... I yeah, think you it's know, just everybody's struggling, right? Yeah, and what you realized was her friends were looking at her life and thinking, what a great life she has. So, and, and yeah, I think we all compare ourselves to other people, but not yeah. truly realizing what those other people might be going through. Yeah. And then struggling just like we might be. Or looking at your own life and being like, you know what, my life's pretty cool. Maybe I should yeah. just roll with it. <laughs> You know, turned out pretty well. So. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to tell us about our next book, Susan? Um, yes. I forgot to bring it up here with me to show you. Okay. Um, that's fine. But it's called Good Neighbors. Yes. And I don't remember who wrote it, but it's called Good Neighbors. We'll post, we'll yeah. post the author. Um, and it is a thriller kind of, um, yeah. about neighborhood dynamics. Yep. I just picked it up yesterday, so I got to get started. <laughs> I've been listening to this one. It's my first listening book. Um, so we'll see how that all goes. But yeah, I think a thriller uh, is probably like a good, like a thriller drama neighborhood dynamics is a pretty good description of it. Yeah. 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 We'll talk about that one next month. We will, everybody. Um, and then I guess we should rate our book and drink. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. I almost forgot <laughs> that we do rating. Okay. Let's do the drink first. So, yeah, I didn't love it. I'm not you know what? I don't think it was the cucumber. I think um, the gin was really strong. Mm -hmm. I think if I made it again, I think I'd do less gin. Yep. Like maybe only one shot of gin. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I I absolutely agree. I think you're right. For me, it was um, a little bit heavy, a little bit too heavy on the gin with one and a half shots. I might go with just a full shot. Yeah. 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 So that's like a two star drink for me. Not, not great. And I'll try it again with less gin and see. Yeah. For me, it's probably a three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the book. I'm, I think this is a four star for me. I, oh. I really like, it was good. Four star for me. <laughs> so I'm going to go with a four and a half star because I always leave it open because you never know when someone can do better. So I, I, I hate giving top ranks for anything. Um, but this is probably my favorite book that we've read so far. I really love this one. Four and a half from Jen. <laughs> Very enjoyable. I definitely recommend very enjoyable. I'll be handing this one. I already have people in mind here that I'm like, 
oh, I feel like you need to read this. This is a great book for you. So I'm going to be already passing it on. Hey, so, you know, it's like Cricket. So in the, in the book, Cricket starts her own little library outside of her house because her husband was like a playwright and everything. So one of the things that Cricket does is starts this library outside of her house, one of those they, I've seen them before where you just put a bunch of books and you can take one and put one in. I love them. I love them. I'm not going to put you on the spot, Susan, but you should maybe start one of those on your front lawn. And maybe I should too. And we should put these books in there and then tell people if you have recommendations that you want us to read, throw them in the slot and then we can read their books too. Yeah, I've thought about having one. There used to be one across the street and um, but there's quite a few in the neighborhood and I've thought about it. So okay. such a good okay. like book sharing option. So yeah. anyway, oh, loved it. Great book. And, yeah. So um, until next time, everyone have a drink, read a book and be happy.